back to our top story, that of Russian-made missiles landing in Poland in a village close to the Ukrainian border. Let's bring in Melvin Levitsky, who is a former U.S. ambassador and currently a professor of international policy and practice at the University of Michigan. He joins us now from Ann Arbor. Ambassador Levitsky, good to have you on the show. Um, let me begin by asking you what your thoughts are on this. I mean, do you think this was a deliberate Russian attack or perhaps a, a stray missile that may have accidentally crossed the border? Well, I think um, it's probably stray. The, the, the question is, are they sending a warning signal? I don't think in this situation that they would take a chance of uh, bringing the United States or NATO in because, uh, you know, according to the NATO Treaty Article 5, an attack on one is an attack on all. Uh, so my guess is that it's, that it's stray, unless they have some other motive for just uh, warning the alliance uh, that they are ready to, uh, they are ready to uh, engage in even further attacks. Um, all right, L let's 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 just go with your theory. I mean, if this was uh, an accident, uh, what do you think the the likely response will be? You know, I don't think that NATO or the particularly well, I'll speak about the United States wants to uh, get engaged by uh, having an exchange of fire uh, with Russia. So my guess is, is they will take this seriously, but not respond in kind. Uh, there are ways of communicating with the Russians, both the Russian uh, military command and with the leadership in Russia to try to figure out what this was. Now, obviously, if it, uh, if it were to repeat itself, then we would have a sense that they were, it was more than uh, just an accident and that's sending a message, in which case, the escalation would be very dangerous because we might get in a shooting war, given the uh, the obligations of the NATO members to come to the rescue of, uh, of a member that was attacked. Let, let's talk about that and scenario. That could, very, that could be very that could be a very dangerous. I, I, Russians I, have to be careful about this. Yeah, I, I do agree with you. I mean, if you look at it from from what actually is going on on the ground, the Russians definitely have uh, are, are backed into a corner. They have lost a considerable territory in parts that they just declared annexed just weeks ago. Uh, the, the campaign is not going uh, according to them. I mean, this could also be very well um, a, a, a motive, a desire from the Russian president to actually test NATO's resolve. Yeah, that's, I think that's, that's possible. You know, also, there are a number of indications of dissatisfaction uh, certainly among the troops, you know, when you we've had this Bellingcat that has been uh, monitoring the troops, basically saying, why are we here? What are we doing here? Um, you know, the um, the Russians before when they were in Afghanistan and the body bags started coming back, there was considerable, considerable amount of ferment inside inside Russia. Sometimes it's hard. To, it's hard to see because the, the press is pretty closely held. But my guess is that uh, uh, with the casualties they have undertaken so far, that there is some stirring, some boiling within within the, that pot in, internally, domestically in Russia. Now, what does that mean for Putin? Could he be overthrown? You know, he's he's um, he's in he's in pretty good shape because he's put all, almost all the oligarchs and the power leaders in their positions and given them favors and all that. On the other hand. Uh, if there's this internal disruption, um, they would they would certainly try to get rid of him, and they would feign something like diplomatic illness or some reason to do that. But I think that's a possibility now. Okay, Alvin Levitsky, thank you very much for joining us here on Charity World. I do appreciate uh, talking to you and hearing your analysis. Thank you.